Did you know that El Clasico is perhaps the biggest rivalry in club football? As much as it is easy to say this rivalry is limited to just Spain and Europe, there is no club rivalry that has come close in a very long time. The El Clasico draws more attention than the Champions League, and people around Europe would rather talk about it than about the Champions League. You see, the El Clasico in itself is grand, however, the Ronaldo-Messi rivalry significantly spiced it up. So, after this rivalry stopped being a thing in Spain, the El Clasico, which still remained a big deal, began missing something. Sadly, El Clasico is not what it used to be. However, it is almost beginning to look like the days of the El Clasico not getting ample attention are over. Why is this so? What's new with the El Clasico? The El Clasico has been reborn. This is perhaps the strangest thing you have heard today. However, with Lamin Yamal becoming the future face of Barcelona and Brazil's Endrick moving directly to Real Madrid from Brazil, it has become glaring how El Clasico will once again keep us at the edge of our seats. When 17-year-old Endrick and 16-year-old Lamin Yamal started playing football, no one knew how far they would go or how soon they would become very influential. However, with their achievements in football, they are already being considered the new faces of the El Clasico. How are they taking over from Ronaldo and Messi? Ronaldo and Messi, two of football's best, came into the picture like every other superstar. Of course, they seemed better than the average player their age. The world had no idea they would go on to be such massive superstars. Everyone who saw CR7 and Messi play football knew they would make a mark. But in an era where Ronaldinho was the biggest player on the planet and seemed to control the El Clasico, it didn't look like a day would come when the El Clasico would thrive on the rivalry between two superstars. We have seen several young players come on the scene since Ronaldo and Messi became a force, but it didn't look like any of them were going to have an effect on the El Clasico. You see, right from the days when Ronaldo was still a Manchester United player, he always had a rivalry with Messi. The first time the two greatest players of all time went head-to-head, -head, CR7 had the upper hand. However, when it mattered the most, in the Champions League semi-final between Manchester United and Barcelona, Messi got the better of Ronaldo. While CR7 was still a red devil, it seemed like they had a rivalry. However, they were just getting started. CR7 got his first Ballon d'Or before Messi, and most people expected him to stay ahead of Messi in this area. However, the Argentine got his first Ballon d'Or and went on to get three more before the Portuguese got his second. As much as it might be difficult to tell if these two players actually considered themselves enemies, their fans seem like bitter enemies. Well, Ronaldo was able to catch up in the Ballon d'Or race before Messi went ahead again. If you think the fight for the best player in the world was the only bone of contention between the captain of the Portuguese national team and the captain of the Argentine national team, it is easy to say you didn't follow football in the last decade and a half, as these two players did not only have the Ballon d'Or as their battleground, they also had the El Clasico as a ring. Ronaldo and Messi are technically off the scene, and a new crop of players are on board. These players all have their qualities and fans but the world is still interested in the Messi and Ronaldo rivalry and is hoping to see a new set of stars carrying on with this rivalry and influencing El Clasico with it. So, what two players are giving Planet Football this level of rivalry? The average football fan might not think much about this before providing an answer. It seems easy to assume that Holland and Mbappe are the new Ronaldo and Messi. But really, are they? Yes, they are two of the best on the planet, but they don't exactly have a rivalry. Mbappe might be coming to Madrid, but we do not see Holland playing in Barcelona. So, regardless of how much of a rival they become, the El Clasico is actually left out. We will see who the new Ronaldo and Messi are in a moment. But first, kindly smash the like and share buttons. Also, subscribe to this channel if you are new here. Holland and Mbappe might be the first names that come to the minds of people when looking for the best replacements for CR7 and his greatest rival in the scheme of things. But they are not the only names. Two other names that pop up very regularly when looking for the best replacements for Messi and Ronaldo are Ansu Fati and Vinny Jr. The Spaniard and the Brazilian are, of course, really talented and two of the most gifted players of their generation. That's not all. The Madrid number 7 jersey now belongs to Vinny Jr., while Barcelona's number 10 jersey was Ansu Fati's. 
This naturally rekindled the El Clasico rivalry. Sadly, taking over a player's number doesn't necessarily make another a replacement for the older player. If it had worked this way, Ronaldo could have been called the new Beckham. Since Mbappe, Holland, Vinny Jr. and Ansu Fati are clearly not responsible for the rebirth of the El Clasico, who and who are bringing the El Clasico alive again? The new faces of the El Clasico Well, the fact is, there will never be any player who will be a perfect replacement for another. So, there are really no players that can perfectly replace Ronaldo and Messi and the roles they played in helping us enjoy the El Clasico. However, two young players currently seem like they can grow to enjoy the accolades and perhaps the rivalry that El Clasico used to be associated with. These players are Spain's Lamin Yamal and Brazil's Endrik. These two players are both very young and talented, and they are coming up in an era that obviously coincides with the end of Messi and CR7's era in Europe. This could be one reason several people think they will make the El Clasico what it was intended to be. However, the international friendly between Spain and Brazil in March 2024 is actually the reason for this. Why then are Endrick and Lamine Yamal regarded as the new faces of El Clasico? We will provide an answer to this in a moment, but in the meantime, it is vital that you know the history of the El Clasico. This will help you have a better understanding of the intensity of this rivalry. You see, the average football player perhaps thinks the Madrid-Barcelona rivalry is all about football, but that's not the case. This rivalry is quite political and is like a war between Catalonia and Madrid. The seat of Spanish authority, football fans in Spain may understand what this rivalry is really about. But it doesn't seem like several folks outside Spain understand that this is not a rivalry that is just focused on football. Now, an understanding of what this rivalry means makes it easier to understand why crossing from Madrid to Barcelona is almost impossible. You see, the stars of these teams are like soldiers, and the El Clasico is like a battleground. No love is shown. Well, you shouldn't be like Madrid and Barcelona. Please show us some love by liking and sharing this video. Also, subscribe to this channel to see more videos like this. Now, let's get back to why Endrik and Lamal are the new faces of the El Clasico. There might be quite several reasons these young players are tipped to revive the El Clasico. However, chief among them is that they have some similarities to the stars that are taking a bow. Just like Messi, Yamal is a product of La Masia and obviously one of the most talented of his set. This is just one reason. Another reason he is compared to the Argentine maestro is that he seems to have a thing for breaking records. That's not all. The 16-year-old also has a game that's skill-based, just like Messi's, and looks very much like the future of Spanish football. Yamal was considered one of La Masia's best prospects and began training with the first team in September 2022. A couple of months later, he made his first team debut at the age of 15 years, 9 months, and 16 days old, making him the youngest player to feature in a match for the Barcelona first team. That same year, at the age of 16 years and 38 days, he made his first start for Barcelona. Yamal is new on the scene, and not much is known of him yet. However, Xavi knows him well. He got him into the senior team, and speaking of him, he said, Of course, I am surprised by what he does at his age. He's only just 16, Xavi said when asked about Yamal after the match. Everyone is. I am not an exception. He nearly always makes the best decision, which is what makes the difference in football. We have big expectations, even more so when you see what you see on the pitch. He is not starting games on a whim. He starts because we feel he can affect matches. Like I said, he nearly always makes the right decision, which is important when picking the best option. He's intelligent and mature. He's extraordinary. He is an extraordinary kid, very humble, works hard, and likes football. I don't see problems. There is a lot of competition at Barca, of course, but he's ready to play. Yamal's performance led to calls for him to be included in the next Spain squad. Well, he is now part of the squad, and beyond just making the team, he has become a key player. Born in Spain, he has represented the country at the youth level, but he is also eligible for Morocco and Equatorial Guinea through his parents. 
It's a personal decision, Xavi said when asked about his international future. I would like him to play for Spain, of course, but it's his personal decision. He has not said anything to me about what he will do. I honestly don't know. I hope he spends many years here with Barca, because he is a player who can mark an era. Endrick, on the other hand, is not a product of any notable football academy. This is something he had in common with CR7. He doesn't seem to be standing on the shoulders of giants, but he is already considered one of the biggest talents to come out of Brazil after Neymar. He is presently not in one of the biggest clubs in Europe, but he is getting Europe's attention. And just like Ronaldo moved from Sporting Lisbon to Manchester United, Endrick will be moving from his current club to one of the biggest clubs in Europe. Endrick might be going through the ranks in very much the same way as Ronaldo did, but that is just one thing that makes him qualified to be called one of the new faces of El Clasico. The Brazilian has a game that is quite similar to that of the Portuguese legend, although a left footer, the 17-year-old who has CR7 as his idol, is considered a fighter. Regardless of how difficult things turn out to be in matches, he stays persistent and keeps mounting pressure on the defenders until he is able to get a goal. The young Brazilian striker has already made his international debut, although he is not the youngest Brazilian to play for the senior team. Since Ronaldo achieved this in 1994, no other Brazilian has earned a senior call-up earlier than Hendrik. Additionally, he will be joining Real Madrid when he turns 18. It doesn't get better than this for him. Speaking of Hendrik, R9 said, I think he is a boy with a very promising future and that he is already acting as a professional. It's something that I feel is missing in the Brazilian team. In 2010, South Africa, Dunga didn't take Neymar, with all of Brazil asking for him. But in 1994, Carlos Alberto Pereira took me, and in 2002, Luis Felipe Scolari took Kaká. In very much the same way as Hendrik idolizes Ronaldo, Lamin Yamal sees Messi as his idol. Also, their styles of play are very similar. The young player is left-footed and has amazing scoring, passing, and dribbling abilities, although still far from becoming as good as the eight-time Ballon d'Or winner. Yamal's technical abilities make him the perfect Lionel Messi replacement in Barcelona. Initially, it looked like there could be a rivalry between Lamine Yamal and Hendrik in the future, especially when the latter moves to the Spanish capital. Interestingly, this rivalry turned out earlier than expected. It began in the match between Spain and Brazil at the Bernabeu and will blossom in the El Clasico. You see, these two players showed the world how much they could bring to the table. Unlike Lamine Yamal, who started this match and continuously bossed the Brazilians, Hendrik came off the bench only to score less than 7 minutes after getting into the picture. Hendrik and Yamal might be some of the best of their generation, and this rivalry that is cooking so quickly will likely make them the new faces of El Clasico. The days of the El Clasico being just like any other match in La Liga are over. We are about to step into the era of Lamin Yamal and Hendrik, which is a new phase for El Clasico. These two players look very promising, but will they keep us on the edge of our seats for as long as Messi and Ronaldo? There are several questions about the future of these young players, but the only thing we can hope for is that they do not fade like Ansu Fati and Pato.